Hello, welcome to Teen Tiger TV. I'm your host, Tiffany Cutler, and I'm here today with this very lovely lady named Georgian Lucier. What do you value the most about the women you interview? First, I'd like to say I just value the fact that they're willing to dance with me, to come on the <laughs> show, to be interviewed, to share things. I do make a point never to ask them specifics about their personal life that they may not want to reveal, whatever they want to say. You know, I focus more on where they are in their life at this point, how they got to where they were going, mm -hmm. any, you know, big decisions they made, whatever they feel, I just help them unearth their stories. So I really just value their sharing. So is it true that every time you do a show, you go with the women before the show starts to ask if they have any things they don't want to talk about? No, actually, it's more the opposite. What I do is I first contact them, and then typically I'll either have uh, a meeting with them face-to-face -face or we'll do it on the phone. And very often it's a reference. They might know someone who's come on the show, so they're already you know, feeling a little more comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And I, I just say, so I understand that you're in a um, program, the summer program at WPAA-TV. How did that come about? So I usually just start with what I know about them and then try to back up with um, questions about, you know, again, things that led up to that. And then sometimes they'll say to me, well, I don't want this on the show, but, mm -hmm. and they'll tell me something. But otherwise, yeah. I don't say, is there anything you don't want me to say? But because I developed the discussion outline, they can see what I'm already saying. And like the sample I gave you folks, I'll put in parentheses things that they told me that I am thinking they're going to use in response to the question. Mm -hmm. And so that gives them an opportunity to say, no, I don't really want that. So I work more from the affirmative. The guests you have, they know someone that you already mm -hmm. um, interviewed. Do you get most of your guests from them knowing someone that you already interviewed? Well, that's an interesting question. I don't think I've ever really looked at it as like a percentage-wise. But typically, there's some type of networking that's involved. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I'll do the invite. So Susan here at the studio has put me in touch with a few people. Some of them have friends that I've had for a long time, particularly when I got started, or um, people I've worked with. So I work on a nonprofit board of directors, and so there was this one woman I thought she seemed pretty interesting and maybe would be open to it, so she came on. So usually there's some point of contact. I don't put an ad somewhere that would, yeah. yeah. Going off what I said, would you want to ever interview a man if he did something extraordinary, or would you want to just stick to women? Well, this show I've designed for women, and so that's just how it's evolved. Um, for the studio here, I did interview a man as part of a different program, which I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, but I try to keep the theme of the show going, which is women who are at least like kind of age 40, entering mm -hmm. midlife, which many women do not even want to think of themselves getting into midlife, which tells me all the more we need to talk about <laughs> it because that's ridiculous. Um, but there's so much negative associated with getting older, particularly for women. Um, so that's just been my lane that I'm in. When you interviewed the band, like you were just telling me, mm -hmm. what was the interview about? Well, that interview actually was with one of the... Um, providers in Wallingford of funeral and bereavement services. Mm -hmm. So we talked about his professional services. Mm -hmm. yep. That sounds like it's such a fun interview. Well, it was. <laughs> but it was very... Um, it's very eye-opening, probably, and very interesting. Well, when you talk about community TV being um, dedicated to inspiring and informing, it was very informative, yeah. I'm sure, because many people don't even want to get into or haven't had the reason to get into that mm -hmm. topic. And he did. we actually did a two-part two half hours because he did explain a lot and then COVID really had a big impact, the pandemic yeah. on what typically people followed as practices and mm -hmm. what options were presented and um, that's changed things too. So it, it actually was very interesting. How can people my age use the resources at WPAA to elaborate our voices? Well, I think certainly being in this program that you're in is a wonderful example. And then also there are other um, shows here at the studio that from time to time might be an opportunity. So if it's an artist show or, you know, whatever the topics are um, involved in some way, whether it's behind the camera or maybe you get, say, say it's an artist show and you are, you're getting involved in some of the arts or you know someone who is and you, you can be kind of one of those connectors. Let's say someone my age 
around high school age came up to you and said, I want to be going to show. I think, again, it's staying in the lane. So the theme of midlife, I've typically kind of starts at 40. That's mm -hmm. the general rule. Um, actually, I think my first guest was maybe at a little under 40. Now, I've interviewed women as old as like 92 who are still very vibrant and just mm -hmm. like, you know, making things happen for themselves. So it would be more a matter of um, finding a way to have you be on a show. Probably wouldn't be on my show, but, uh, yeah. you know, um, maybe come on with someone who's a mentor or whatever. It, I'm open to possibilities, but it's more a matter of, I think when you get an idea, um, for me, I find staying with it can really help because I don't have that many rules about the show, but saying, okay, it's for women. We're talking about growth as we move into, mm -hmm. you know, different phases of our life and um, we're inspiring each other, so. What effect do you want to have on your audience and what takeaway do you want your viewers to have of the show? I'd like to think that the viewers would find it to be done well enough that um, it's not painful to watch, <laughs> you know, that it's not totally JV. Um, and think, oh, that's interesting. And um, I would really hope that I'm able to really present a cameo of the, the guest that's engaging to them. So some people may or may not be interested in what the guest is talking about, but one of the inspirations I think I had was one time um, I started my HR consulting business, so I was working from home before that was very common. And my mother called me and said, oh, you should see this woman on TV. I think it would be really interesting for you to you know, hear what she has to say. I would love for that to happen. And one example I'll give is that I interviewed a friend of mine whose neighbor watched her on TV and said, geez, Jan went back to college. And this person happens to be visually impaired, so she has to get rides to places oh. and um, has a very full life, but she just she can't yeah. drive. And um, if Jan can do it, then I can do it. And I'm like, yes. That's exactly what I want. That's the to best happen. thing, girl power. Yeah. You were talking about like girl power pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, like, what's the biggest girl power you've ever seen someone have on the show that you interview for? I don't think there's any one person. Well, I've interviewed community leaders mm -hmm. who really impact the organizations. Um, so, for example, one person I would say. Um, so my friend Paulette Fox, and she happens to be in New Britain, and she runs a nonprofit that really encourages youth in New Britain to um, not fall into traps of, you know, early motherhood and getting dependent on, you know, mm -hmm. social services or whatever. And she talks sometimes um, to me about what she tells her girls, because they are very young women, they're high schoolers. And so she's just done a terrific job, um, and many of these people are African Americans, and she um, inspires them to think bigger. So I would say she's one person that comes to mind. That's incredible mm -hmm. because at that age, which I am, I would be so scared. Well, culturally, I think um, what can happen is things become more accepted within certain areas, yeah. and it doesn't seem such a shock, such a disappointment, such mm -hmm. a you know life-ending kind of thing mm -hmm. to contemplate. So um, Paulette just really is a perfect example to them of someone who is an independent woman and can speak to them, understanding, having probably a little greater understanding of their circumstances. If you could go back in time, what would you tell yourself about a midlife crisis? Hopefully it doesn't have to be a crisis for everyone, but I think for women, and I wasn't so aware of getting older and worrying about it so much. I mean, I was just working and just, you know, I was a mother at a little bit at an older age and just kind of cranking along. but. There's so much in our society about ageism with women. Like, you, if you're not at your, you know, peak beauty, you don't have a lot of um, power. Let's say, okay. And that whole—I've just been a feminist my whole life—and that whole idea that we're here to just be ornamental or something. I, and, and so I would say to myself, um, talk to all your friends about that even more and more because um, it just creeps up on people. So again, if I—I I had a woman on my show recently who's just turning 40. And she's like, I'm going to be on this show called Midlife Matters, and I don't think of myself as midlife. And I'm thinking, well, how long do you think you're going to live? I mean, come on, you're 40. Like, you know, yeah. you're not going to live to 170. So, but the stigma of it is still so prevalent, and you just get very attuned to like commercials of, you know, erase the wrinkles, and like, like that has anything to do with the quality of your life. So it doesn't mean people have to just give up and 
look haggard, but it's not about the looks. And so I guess at my younger age, I would just say, don't let that enter into it. What happened if someone came up to you and they were in their 40s and was insecure about their wrinkles and their age spots? What would you tell them? I think finding mentors, mentors, it sounds male mm -hmm. kind of, but um, <laughs> that are really just, like I talked about some of these women in their 90s who are just powerhouses. Um, find women that you admire that um, you don't admire them because of how they look necessarily, but you admire them because of what they've accomplished. And it doesn't have to be a big fancy thing. Again, we may get more inspired by people who are maybe just a little ahead of us versus a celebrity. But focus on, find out your true gifts and focus on building them and don't go crazy on the latest you know, fad for staying youthful looking. So would you say that who you admired changed over the years? Who you oh, well, I'm sure in terms of my sense of, of women, but and like my mother had some good friends. Like this, she had this one friend who I admired because she just was pretty bold. And it was interesting. She was the one who kind of drove the car. Her husband didn't drive, which why not? But at the time, that was like, not normal. What, what's about yeah. that? And so, um, and I happened to call my f parents' friends by their first names. I, I just had these, and the women were all, they all worked. And so that was really pretty cool. And I can't remember wearing, thinking so much about how they looked just as, as much about how they acted. So when you saw these women, did you think, I want to work like them and drive like them when I grow up? Yeah, I mean, I think who we're surrounded with influences us. And I just kind of always expected I would work. Would you consider them as very um, powerful women, what they did and how they acted? And, I mean, in general, and then as I you know, made my own, I mean, they still were pretty much part of couples and everything, and this yeah. was a long time ago, but then as I made my own friendships and then friends I had went through different life changes and you know, they might have gotten divorced, you know, and, and just all the things that you go through um, when you can really understand what people are going through and, and see how they... Um, get up every morning and just tackle challenges. That's very inspiring. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for watching Team Tiger TV.